Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Friday, October the 14th, and it is 7.50 in the morning. We're going to start off with the sound saying, coming from 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The back is coming from 1 Samuel 7, 12, and it says, Hitherto has the Lord helped us. Hitherto has the Lord helped us. Hitherto. Here, again, he has helped us. Okay, we have to finish um, Luke 22, but before we do that, I'd like to share... I should have turned that off. I like to share Proverbs 9 with you. It's a little hot in here. All right. Proverbs 9 is just 18 verses. Oh, Jesus, I should have turned that off. Invitation of wisdom and of folly. Invitation of wisdom and of folly. You get several invitations in life, but an invitation of wisdom is always better than that of folly. All right? Wisdom has built her house. She has hooled out seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her maize, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in a way of understanding. Amen. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. This is true. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. And we saw this yesterday when Jesus was accusing them of being non-believers because they were claiming to be the children of Abraham. And shortly after he says, he who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Here comes the insult. The Jews answered him, aren't we right? In saying that you are a Samaritan and demon possessed. Mockers. Insult. Okay. So is this true? Absolutely. Even Jesus was subjected to that. All right. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebucks a wicked man incurs abuse okay so when you try to correct people sometimes in that which they are doing that is wicked expect to be abused expect to be disrespected expect to be insulted all right difference between wisdom and folly pay attention Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebucks a wicked man incurs abuse. Do not rebuck a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuck a wise man and he will love you. What's the difference between the mocker and the wise man? Simple. The wise one, man or woman, will hear thee out. Will listen to what you're saying. The mocker will not listen to what you're saying. Might not even let you get it out. That is the difference. One will hate you for that which you are saying that is right. And the other one will love you. Okay? Because not everything that is said is smooth and easy like ice cream. Sometimes the truth in many ways, has a bite to it. It doesn't matter 
If you're talking to a wise soul, they will love you for it and respect you as well. All right? Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Okay? Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. So is it worth it sometimes saving your breath when you recognize who you're talking to? Yes, it is. Okay? If you're talking to a wise soul, that wise soul will open their ears and close their mouths. You can continue. But the one who is salty, don't miss your breath. I'm not trying to be like Jesus. I couldn't be Jesus even if I tried. No soul could. At all. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will add to his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't get wisdom unless you fear the Lord. That is a prerequisite to wisdom. There's no way around it. All right? And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That's what I say to you. The definition of wisdom is knowledge and understanding of things that are spiritual. The Holy One is spiritual. All right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through me your days will be many and years will be added to your life. That means Jesus. All right, and then your deeds will also help you. In the commandments, it says, honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days will be long. That's a blessing. That's a promise tacked on to that commandment. All right. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Yes, Lord. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Yes, Lord. The woman folly is loud. She is undisciplined and without knowledge. Yes, Lord, and there's much of that today. Many of them operate without even the spirit of discernment. Which, it, it serves you well because it, it, it speaks unto thee from within. It moves you from where you are. If you are in the face of danger and your spirit is telling you so, it is best to listen. You might be saving your own lives. The, fo the woman folly is loud. She is undisciplined and without knowledge. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on on their way. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of the grave. Yes, stolen water is sweet. And eating things in secret is delicious, but it's never worth it at all. Be careful what you do. All right. So let's finish up with Luke. That was a 71 verse. And I think we did 1 to 35. I will repeat 35 and continue on to 71. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it. And also a bag, if you don't have a sword, sell your clout and buy one. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressor, and I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. That means his time was coming. 
All right. The disciple said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That is enough, he replied. Jesus prays at the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone throw beyond them, kneeled down, and prayed. People don't kneel anymore when they pray. That is the most humbling position before God. Kneeling. Even in the Catholic Church, we still kneel several times throughout the service. Don't stand and pray unto God. Kneel. You see all these folks following fake gods? They bow down and kneel all day long. There's only one God, and he deserves to be respected in such a way. You need to humble yourself before God, and kneeling is the reason why he gave you knees, so that you may worship him, not just so you can bend down and run. Father, he withdraw about a stone throw beyond them, kneel down and pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in an anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling into the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciple, he found them asleep. Exhausted from sorrow. Yes, they were sorrowful that night. Painfully so. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Jesus arrested. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, shall we strike with our sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this, exclamation mark. He screamed it. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said, now, you, can you imagine this? This moment right there. Someone has taken a sword to your ear, and it drops. You see it drop. Jesus comes up, picks up the ear, and puts it right back in place. No stitches, no anesthesia, no needles, nada. Okay. From that point on, that soldier was no more good. He was good. But not for the task that he came for. He was actually better now. Apprehending the Lord was no longer his concern. At all. He was more mystified by what the man had just done. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officials of the temple guard, and the elders, who had came for him, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour, he said, when darkness reigns. And darkness reigns in our world daily today. Daily by the deeds that we do, the laws that we implement, the social change that has occurred. Daily. The moral fabric of this nation is just about disappeared. It lies among the elders now.
and not all of them. Because some elders today are not true elders as we know them, as they should be. Peter disowns Jesus. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another servant, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galatian. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned. At this point, Jesus was on his knees, being rough handled by the guards. But at the words that Peter spoke, their eyes met. Can you just imagine? Just as he was speaking the rooster crow, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The guards mocked Jesus. The man who was guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blinded, folded him and demanded prophecies who hit you. And they said many other insulting things to him. Jesus before Pilate and Herod. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. Amen. They all ask, are you then the Son of God? How many times does he have to say it? You see why Jesus was saying, you can't hear me? He could have said those same words a hundred times and they still would have gotten no understanding at all. He replied, you are right in saying, I am. Then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard from his own lips. And this is the way the world runs today. Backwards. Without fear for God. Without reverence for him. For his son. Forgetting that these things actually occur. Pretending as it's just a storybook. That has, it has no effect on us at all. But like Jesus said, the devil's a liar and he is here to deceive the world. And he's doing a fabulous job. Don't forget. In the same way that he left, he will, he, will, he will return. Who knows when that day is or that hour. Let it be that you are among the ones that join him. So watch your deeds and stop being a man pleaser. There's only one person you need to please and that's the one you don't see. All right. Thank you for listening. My name is Brenda Guerrero, and as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love, and may the will of God for our lives be manifested. Have a beautiful weekend. Don't forget to rest. Um, be kind, be helpful. Call your parents. Tell them you love them. Call your siblings. Especially not the ones you talk to all the time. Talk, call the one you don't talk to. Do something different. 
Do something good in the eyes of God. Take yourself out the picture. Next time someone tries to talk to you, give them your ear, Lord God, and be among the wise and not among the fools. Thank you for listening and have a beautiful weekend. Talk to you next time.